Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this webinar on how to approach tax governance as a strategic issue. It is organized by ECODA, the European Confederation of Directors Association, and PwC, the well-known uh, audit firm. Uh, first, uh, I would like just to say that uh, I'm chair of the ECODA Policy Committee and we represent uh, about 20, more than 20 European countries and more than 50,000 board members. And I have the pleasure and the honor to be the moderator of this debate. We have as uh, guests and speakers, Edwin Visser, PwC tax policy leader for the EMEA region, and Cristiano Borean, Group Chief Financial Officer of Generali, will provide their views during this conversation. Let's start with a short introduction. It is really an opportune timing to consider tax in the current environment. The recent G7, the US-EU discussion on minimum tax rates for corporation tax, and the hot debate on the GAFA taxation or just an illustration, timely illustration of why this webinar is important. Good corporate tax governance is increasingly becoming a theme that boards are expected to include in their corporate governance framework. Aggressive tax planning strategies, while currently legal, are being viewed negatively by the public and are having a significant reputational impact on companies that have implemented them. We have to be careful. Tax optimization is not, does not mean tax avoidance. And reputation is a real strategic asset for the development and value of a company. Reputation and tax governance are therefore going hand in hand. We can expect increasingly strong pressure on this subject from both stakeholders and investors, all the more with the current crisis. Investors consider a company's tax strategy as do banks when deciding on a loan. We should not forget that the principle for responsible investment refer to tax strategy. The main question for our webinar today is therefore how board members should and could build a sustainable approach to tax governance. Thank you for the participants to be with us today. We have a very large number of registrations, including representatives of European institutions, the parliament, ECOFIN, many national institutions like the Portuguese, Hellenic, British uh, institutions, etc. So as participants, you will be in silent mode, but you are most welcome to put a question or a comment to our speakers in the chat. And we will pick questions during the webinar. Before giving the floor to our first speaker, I want to inform everyone that the webinar is being recorded. Now, I will give the floor to Edwin Visser from PwC, could you please set the scene for us? What has been the approach taken by national authorities, European authorities, international authorities, and what the companies should do with ESG governance, including tax indeed? Edwin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michel, for the kind introduction and thanks, Ecora, for having me at this uh, webinar. And when I prepared, I remember that the last trip abroad was last year for the purpose of joining the first webinar, I think, on corporate governance, uh, corporate tax governance on 10 March 22. That was before, you know, the corona did hit continental Europe. And I'll start where we left it last year and then quickly move on to the evolution of tax governance and reporting based on recent developments and the rapidly increasing importance of ESG. So again, just to refresh the memory, um, what I said last year, you know, the changing purpose of a corporation, uh, shareholder uh, capitalism moves to stakeholder capitalism, induces the need for long-term 
uh, tax strategies with the involvement of, of stakeholders. And board members need to be uh, involved. And corporate tax governance is becoming a critical factor for external stakeholders. Uh, Michel referred to a bank and a loan. Uh, you know, sometimes you cannot even get a loan or at a higher price if you don't have your tax management and your tax strategy uh, in order. So this year, I'll focus on some recent developments and tax governance in the context of an ESG environment, and that both underscore the need for active board involvement from my perspective. What's relevant, uh, what happened in the last year, I think very relevant is the report of the World Economic Forum and the International Business Council on measuring stakeholder capitalism, uh, common metrics. And one of the metrics is, is tax. And the standard metric is that companies, um, well, who signed up to this report, and those are the largest companies in the world, including the big four, uh, agreed that uh, the total taxes paid have to be have to be shared with the stakeholders. And as an expanded metric, uh, the report suggests to uh, publish and share with stakeholders the total tax paid uh, by country for significant locations. Uh, tax integrity management is becoming more and more relevant, uh, e.g., yeah, for example, for banks, uh, on the basis of the anti-modeling laundering directive, they scrutinize their clients on tax integrity risk when accepting clients, but also they scrutinize and screen transactions for uh, tax integrity risks. And I will come with an example of ING uh, later on. We see various tax regulatory develop developments. Uh, for example, the plan of the commission to require companies to publish their effective tax rates based on commercial accounting. That's in the communication on business taxation in the 21st century, published by the commission on 18 May this year. Um, there will be uh, in the plans of the Commission, a rebranded common consolidated corporate tax base with commercial accounting as a basis for the harmonized tax base. Again, more transparency, more consistency, um, uh, more accountability. Uh, uh, what's, what's very relevant, I think that that's for boards very relevant because until now we have been talking about, you know, governance codes, um, behavioral codes like those of the B team, all very relevant. We have seen companies uh, taking own initiatives like, like Shell publishing a tax contribution report, for example, last year. But now the EU countries, the member states have agreed on public country by country reporting. So that, that means there will be hard law uh, that requires companies to publish data on their corporate income tax payments per country uh, as of 2024. So that means, you know, all the directive, uh, the directive doesn't contain any guidance or requirements on tax governance, but in order to reliably report on tax, in my view, you need to have a tax governance uh, system in place, beginning with a tax strategy, tax risk management, uh, implementation, et cetera. So a very meaningful step, uh, albeit, you know, that it is only for the corporate income taxes, but I think, you know, this is only the, the beginning. Uh, what will change the landscape as well is the G7 agreement uh, very recently last weekend on a minimum global effective tax rate of 15% uh, in the countries in which a multinational operates. So that also requires, I think, something on your tax governance, your tax risk management, your systems in order to ensure that you meet the requirements of a effective tax rate of 15% in the countries in which you operate. Although the word tax doesn't appear in the proposal for an EU corporate sustainability reporting directive, I think, you know, in the broader context, uh, this proposal is, is very relevant uh, for companies like, like yours. It's a next step, I think, you know, on sustainability reporting, maybe also setting, you know, the standards for the rest of the world uh, in terms of hard law uh, requirements for companies to meet with. And I think, you know, as a company, you should also think about tax in the context of this proposal. It's not in, the, in there, to my understanding, because there is a, well, fear is maybe too big a word, but uh, adding tax issues to such a directive could lead to discussions whether they should be voted on a unanimity basis or a qualified majority voting basis. So it's not in there, but in my, my view, you cannot say anything about sustainability without dealing tax. Now, again, tax and easy, what is the connection uh, tax has been largely absent from ESG conversations until recently, I think. But perception of tax is changing fast huh, because of the following factors, and it's not, not rocket science. Uh, 
Uh, the concept of fair tax is, is back due to COVID-19. Uh, governments have been building up debts and they need to be paid back. And all uh, economic actors have to contribute to that, including companies. Uh, the sustainable development goals have, goals have to be funded. We see increasing you know, environmental taxes, tax incentives, uh, all kind of measures, you know, in the tax, uh, tax scene to, well, to reach uh, uh, the ambitions on the climate. Um, and again, that's what we said last year, you know, we move from shareholder to stakeholder uh, uh, capitalism that requires something different, I think, from companies and from boards. And also by the involvement of stakeholders, I think tax will get another dimension just to remind you uh, of, of this. <clears throat> and then we move on to give a few concrete examples. And when you think about ESG metrics, you can think of environmental taxes, green subsidies. What I find important that I think this one, uh, tax is social, uh, what is responsible tax behavior and what is your contribution to society? I think that's a very important metric. That's what uh, stakeholders are interested in. That's where investors are interested in, clients, you know, are in interested in. So very, very important, I think. And then to the G, you know, that's, that's again, tax governance, I think. And ESG has a dimension to this, you know. Uh, when you have a tax strategy, it should be aligned with your ESG. Reporting tax risk management should also take that into account. So when looking at tax governance, I think, you know, the importance is again there and, and even increase, you know, in the context of, of ESG because tax is a very relevant part in our view of, of ESG. Just a few examples. When you look at investors, for example, they're adding ESG and taxation to their responsible investment and sustainable finance approach. One nice example, interesting example, I should say, is the Norges Bank, uh, the sovereign wealth fund of Norway. Uh, it divested uh, uh, from seven companies because of their tax policies or the lack thereof. So tax policy is getting more and more relevant uh, for, for investors like the Norges Bank, but also for large pension funds. Uh, I think I discussed last year the example of the ATOS guidelines, the Swiss pension funds were also attach a lot of value uh, to the tax strategy of the companies they want to invest in. Um, but also in other areas, so when you look at this example of UBS, uh, they will not contract with third parties where they act uh, and help others to avoid taxes. And that, that's interesting. And it's not only direct investment, but you also put a, uh, well, you, you, you raise the bar, I think, for people that deliver goods to you, that provide services to you, and you look at their tax behavior. Uh, interesting also, ING, this quote, um, it says, well, aggressive tax avoidance is not illegal, but it can be damaging to the communities in which we, that is ING, operate. Uh, so putting the bar at a very high, a very high level. Um, also in the context of sustainable finance, ESG gets more and more important. The cost of credit could be higher. If you don't meet, you know, the ESG standards of, of, of a bank or a financer, uh, rating agents, and tax governance, tax strategy, and tax behavior to their ratings. So become more relevant in that uh, perspective as well. And, and this slide is just to illustrate you, you know, to the spectrum uh, to help you understand impact as a cost or is discussed, that's the other side of the scale, uh, discussed as impact on society. So where is your company? But more importantly is, where do you want to be? Could be somewhere in the middle, could be more on the left side, could be more on the right side. Right side. That's a free choice, of course, but you have to think about the consequences of that, that choice. Broader consequences than the tax bill alone, because it has impact on the attractivity of your company for investors, for pension funds, uh, etc. what mm -hmm. we discussed before. So well, what, what should you do? And I think this is a bit of reiteration of last year. So the first step, I think, you know, is to develop a responsible tax strategy. And that should be driven by your purpose, your values, uh, by stakeholder engagement, the business strategy, et cetera. Tax strategy is not the standalone thing. It's, it's a strategy that should be aligned with all the other important, uh, uh, well, things like value and purpose. Um, 
develop a tax transparency approach. How transparent do you want to be? For example, when you look at public CBCR, it only requires you to public uh, to publish data on corporate income taxes. But what will investors say if you only do that and not publish, for example, data on wage taxes, uh, VAT, etc.? When this directive does not uh, require you to uh, publish disaggregated information on some countries outside of the EU, there's a choice, of course. What will investors say? What will NGOs say? When the media, what will the media say if you will not publish, for example, the data on your tax contribution in Switzerland, but do it on an aggregated basis for all countries outside the EU? So there's choices to make. There's board decision needed, I think, that's very strategic because we'll have an impact on the company as, as a whole. Um, it's important to understand also from uh, your board responsibilities, you know, who is accountable, who's accountable at board level, who's accountable at the supervisory board level, what are the roles and responsibilities? So the next step is indeed then to implement um, the tech strategy in the organization together with uh, risk management. You have to have clear policies and procedures clear roles and responsibilities because having a tax strategy is one, you know, if you put it in a drawer, then it will not be of much use uh, for you. And, and sometimes, you know, some, some VP taxes uh, not always, uh, I think, appreciate the importance of having a tax strategy. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a life, it should be implemented, it should be checked every year if it's still, you know, current, if it still meets all recent developments. And finally, of course, well, tax should be included in the transparency reporting. And, and mm -hmm. last and maybe not least, it's maybe worthwhile to think about assurance on your tax reporting. So, and then very, very practical, I think, because that was also the question. What, what questions could one raise when it comes to good tax governance and control? Well, I have a few examples on, on this slide. Just conversation starters, I think, with your colleague board members, uh, with the VP tax, with stakeholders, you know, and, and when you do this, I think use these questions, then I think you will land somewhere. And this could be helpful, I think, you know, in order to understand where your organization is, where you, where you want your organization to be, uh, and in building a, a tax strategy. Michelle, I think I will stop here with my brief introduction and hand it over to you again. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you. Now, uh, let's turn to uh, Cristiano. Borea, Group Chief Financial Officer of Generali. Uh, Cristiano, uh, could you give us a concrete example on which processes your company uh, has taken, has put in place to ensure that proper decisions about tax matters at board level are, uh, in, are decided? And how did you make sure that your board has made it a strategic and corporate governance matter? Cristiano, please. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. I hope you hear me well. Uh, after the introduction uh, made a colleague, I think it is important to bring some concrete examples we are uh, already uh, doing in, in generally uh, as a group, uh, as you know, generally, is a multinational acting in more than 60 countries as an insurance, but more than 150 country for what is regarding the assistance uh, uh, activities. So it's quite a global player and uh, our framework uh, has to be articulated uh, and uh, to the level of the complexity of the business which we are managing. Uh, the journey uh, related to the tax control framework and in general the activity related to the tax strategy and, and, and regulatory framework uh, has started many years ago. We are speaking about 2016, where we already had the board involved in a tax control framework where the internal tax risk control system was aimed at detecting, measuring, controlling, and managing the, the tax risk in order to implement the framework. Basically, the process were aimed to constantly monitor the business operations and the related task risk, and clearly as well to promote a corporate culture at all companies level, which are based um, on the principle of honesty, fairness, and respect to the tax law. This is a long journey started many, many years ago. But in the meantime, what we added on top and how the board of directors of Generali Commitment has been enhanced and increased and the focus has been even more put on this topic. 
after the tax control framework, uh, we had then the group tax strategy uh, shared and approved by the board. And then we have a regular reporting on the regulatory uh, framework of the tax control. As well, the last um, news added uh, at the beginning, at the end of uh, 2020, beginning of 2021, is that we entered in the cooperative compliance regime with our Italian uh, tax authority, which is the one controlling the uh, holding and the Italian operations. Uh, let me just briefly dive into the tax control framework. Uh, so we have uh, both Italian and foreign le 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 legal entities within our um, scope. Uh, and uh, we act through a continuous uh, uh, controlling and reporting to our body of internal control, um, which is called the Risk and Control Committee. Uh, and clearly the Risk and Control Committee reports then uh, regularly to the board of director. And this ensures the necessary means and resources that are needed to manage the tax risk, both in compliance with the law and the tax principle. So we have two levels of information. The first one is on the tax control framework monitoring plan, where we have a progressive scope extension of the tax control framework and an, up an update on the cooperative compliance um, enlargement as well and, uh, and activities. On the other side, we have the tax control framework annual reporting where, where there are all the testing results of te test of design and test of effectiveness of the activity of tax control framework and this has been eased and has been done on an annual basis uh, as a follow-up to the, to the risk and control committee with the synthesis report to the board. Now, let's see what happens when uh, we shifted uh, the point from the tax control framework to really bring the board in the heart of the decision of what is the group tax strategy. And this is something we pursued uh, in 2020, the beginning of 2020, when we had uh, the um, willingness of both increasing the control and the transparency of our strategy and as well to have a clear protection, protection of the reputation of the group uh, in order to explain better what we are doing and to avoid any, any misunderstanding, defining the strategic line and managing the correct application of the tax regulation. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically um, based uh, on uh, some uh, inspiring principles which can be synthesized in uh, six uh, uh, five elements uh, which are key, which is uh, um, values, honesty, integrity in the management of the activities, legality, compliance with the tax uh, uh, laws applicable in the countries where we operate in order to manage the tax risk responsibly. The third one is uh, the tone at the top and clearly having the board of directors defining the tax strategy and assuming the role and responsibilities of guaranteeing the application, guiding to the spread of the corporate culture based on the value of, uh, uh, I was men mentioning before, of honesty and integrity and the principle of legality is a very important point. Then transparency is a key guiding uh, principle, uh, the fourth one, where clearly the the, the, the Transparent and collaborative approach with the tax authorities is clearly uh, um, a lighthouse. And at the end, we have as well the shareholder value, where clearly we, as a as question generally, we consider the taxes as a cost on the business activity, uh, which as such has to be managed in compliance with the principle of legality, which is a clearly need to close in a certain sense uh, the circle. Having uh, implemented the tax strategy uh, is also something important to us because we are, as you uh, correctly said before, uh, has been said before, we embedded tax strategy, tax compliance in general, everything which is around the correct usage of, of this element within also the incentive system and sustainability. 
how generally is part of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, uh, which is responsible for evaluating the highest performing companies in terms of sustainable performance. And all of this is based on ESG. Regarding the G of the ESG uh, acronym, um, the uh, uh, dimension of tax strategy uh, is touched and is very important. And uh, for this reason, we enhanced and the journey we did allowed us uh, to, to be positioned well above the average of the insurance sector into this uh, 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 sustainability index. Clearly, it's not only this, but tax was a, a, a part which was important to be tackled. And it is also a driver because uh, improving the position into this uh, index has now been embedded also in the long-term incentive scheme for the top management of the group. And where by top management, I mean the 180, 200 top managers, the whole group worldwide out of the 72,000 employees of the group. So clearly this is uh, aligning shareholder value, principles, long-term view, sustainability, having as well uh, uh, tax and tax strategy and tax control as a key element. Let me just highlight two, two more points. One related to the tax control framework uh, in the regulatory internal framework, how we do operate because this is quite uh, important. We have uh, three layers of uh, framework, starting from the most important. Uh, the first one is we created a task, a task escalation policy, where clearly this is approved by the board of directors and defines the roles, the responsibilities, the reporting lines in the process, which uh, include the tax control framework and the interpretation of the task, the tax uh, a risk. Then uh, we have a tax group guideline, which there there is the definition of the principle and the rules governing the tax management and the relevant risk management checks and procedures. And this is approved by both the group CEO and the group CFO. And then we have a tax compliance model, which is basically the description step by step of the tax risk management process and the instruments used in this process, which is approved and issued by the group CFO. So this is clearly telling you how we work at three different level in order to move from policy to guideline and to uh, operating model. And this is clearly a, 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 a point which uh, allow us to entangle the strategic ta tax matters, both at the board of director level, but then percolating them down throughout the different layers of the organization and of the processes. One last topic, which I would like to highlight uh, is the cooperative compliance. This program uh, is hand aimed uh, to promote an enhanced cooperation between the Italian tax administration and the taxpayers in order to increase the, let's say, the level of uh, certainty on the relevant tax issues. Consequently, we need to prevent in this framework, the tax litigation. So it's very clear, it's very simple, and it is very transparent, allowing a better tax planning and uh, reducing tax uncertainty in the interpretation because the new interaction with the, the tax authority is based, on a, uh, is based on a disclosure of the rela uh, related to the corporate organization and the main tax transaction. With the, the adoption of uh, this tax control framework and the cooperative compliance, uh, um, and with the previous notification of the task risk, tax risk and main tax uh, operation, the tax authority ensures the reduction of the penalty for the companies and the faster ruling procedures um, and improve the cooperation with all the taxpayers. All the, I'm speaking about the Italian largest uh, uh, companies, because to enter, you need to be quite large in, in a company in order of uh, revenues. Um, the main uh, player of the Italian, both financial, industrial, and uh, uh, service um, uh, uh, player are there. 
and uh, we are enlarging it uh, to basically all our Italian-based uh, operations, uh, starting from Assicurazioni Generali, Banca Generali, which are the two listed companies we have in the group. And then we have as well General Italia, which is the largest operating entity we have in the group, uh, and as well uh, uh, our real estate uh, activities. Uh, so clearly this is a quite large perimeter of, op of operations uh, for what regards the Italian-based companies and allow us to um, increase predictability, transparency, and also give a very clear proof point in the way we want to operate. So embedding in the code of conduct of the group, the tax control framework, defining a process and sharing it with uh, uh, the board of directors, having a constant reporting to our risk and control committee, which is made up by our board members, is allowing us, and also the, the board of auditor, is allowing us to have a, a journey of uh, transparency and clarity. And what is most important for me as a as group CFO of, of the group is to avoid tax uncertainty because you never know interpretation of rules. If you, for example, are able to understand them in advance, there is no uncertainty and there is no uh, acting in bad faith. There is acting normally in good faith as long as you have already the answer of how to do. So it's simple, it's transparent, it is a good equilibrium of what we have to do to create shareholder value, but as well to be sustainable because we have a role in the society and it is fully aligned with the pillars of the group and in general with the values of the group uh, which are shared on all stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cristiano. Uh, I will just take the liberty to present very briefly my own experience in a few anecdotes, if you want, but they, they may be telling something. So for instance, in the group, I, I, I refer to board, uh, um, board membership I had in an international company and in a, in a larger French group, international, but based in France. The other one was based in the UK. So we, for instance, we in, in the regions, we always decided, always, as, as, as from the moment we, we, dis, we discussed it at the board level, we decided that the big regional offices, business and regional offices, would always be based in the largest market, in the largest country as the largest market, whatever the tax situation in that market. And that's a very important signal. Second thing, we refused to relocate a CEO who had a double nationality and would have been much better treated in tax terms in the other uh, country than the country where he, we started to use him. So we refused relocation for tax reasons. And this is just an example that uh, the tone at the top, as was mentioned by Cristiano, is very important and must be apparent and translated into real things. Now, uh, this leads us to the, the conversation with our audience. So there is a, a, f first, there is a number of, uh, there's some, one question which I think is encapsulating a lot of what ha has been said. Um, it's, the question says, um, when you say tax strategy, do you simply mean allowing all the means within the law to reduce tax obligation, which is generally adopted by most companies? It makes sense, makes business common sense. Or adopting policy, which brings you to pay more taxes as a good corporate citizen. So maybe you want to to deal with that question? Yes. Piano, yeah. I take it if you want. I, if I can add uh, on your example of the relocation, uh, just to also to answer the question you said, because part of the policy on how we apply tax for relocation, we do apply the so-called tax equalization rule. So basically, if you are an employee starting in a country A and you are uh, referred with the A, country A taxation rate, and you move to country B, uh, you do not get uh, 
um, a benefit. And so uh, this is uh, exactly done to avoid uh, uh, the relocation for fiscal, uh, for fiscal reasons. To answer the question on, uh, on uh, what is the group tax strategy, it's not a, a manifesto, it's a set of operational things. And yes, as a company, we prefer uh, to follow a very simple rule, uh, which is the rule when uh, I was studying as a financial analyst uh, was written. When you have to decide whether to sleep well or, or eat well, uh, the, cho the choice is to sleep well. So this is uh, the, correct, uh, the correct approach, in my opinion. And in general, the group uh, embraced this as a board uh, to have uh, the correct uh, approach uh, and value sharing. Clearly, within the tax strategy, there is the possibility bringing the tone at the top and agreeing to disagree with the, with the tax uh, authority. Because in case there is an absolutely not... Uh, understandable or not mm, good position, we agree to disagree and go to a discussion up to the end with the tax authority. There is this liberty we want to take exactly also to protect shareholder value in case of unnecessary or unwanted or un no, mm, exaggerated, not corrected interpretation. But in general, the principle is exactly to align the correct sharing of the value creation among all the stakeholders. If I may add to Thank you. Cristiano, uh, Michel. Yes, please. It's, it's indeed, you know, what Cristiano says, you know, the tax strategy is not a standalone document. It's connected and based on your purpose, for example, your values, etc. And it's not about paying more or less taxes, you know, but to pay the amount of taxes that is, you know, really connected and aligned with your purpose, your values, and what your stakeholders expect. Let's take, for example, a company that has as a purpose to contribute to the lives better lives and health of uh, citizens in all the countries it operates, for example. And then there is an opportunity, you know, a very uh, complex structure that could help you to reduce the corporate income tax in that country to zero. And then the question is, you know, whether that tax planning really does uh, align and can be explained, you know, uh, in relation to your purpose. How can you explain that you, you re reduce your tax contribution in that country to zero while in the purpose, and that's a bit higher level, I think, than the tax strategy, you say you want to contribute to the better lives and health of the people in the countries in which you operate. So by paying no taxes, you, in fact, uh, deprive the country of, indeed, improving the lives of its citizens. So that's how I see, you know, a tax strategy. It, it's really a complicated ecosystem at a, a strategic level, I think, but it's also very operational, as Cristiano explained. Yes. Um... The Edwin, there was a, a more specific question about the, what, what do you think about the, the tax policy of state owned companies? Yeah, uh, often you know, people expect that state owned companies put the bar at a higher level, I think, when it comes to tax. Uh, but on the other hand, and that's you know, the balance you always have to strike. It's on the one hand, you know, a strategic issue. Uh, but on the other hand, taxes will stay a cost for a company. Uh, for example, state-owned state co state companies often have exemptions for VAT purposes that could make life for these companies sometimes quite complicated, but it also provides a lot of opportunities, I think, to, to plan on, on uh, VAT, VAT and indirect taxes. Uh, so it makes sense for me, you know, for a state-owned company to discuss the tone at the top, at the board level, to uh, put controls and risk management into place, have a tax control framework. But also, you know, you don't often, state-owned state companies sometimes do not pay corporate income taxes, but they pay wage taxes, they pay VAT, which still is a very large part of the cash out of that state-owned company. So you have to have a strategy, I would say. You have to have risk management in place, uh, controls in place. Um, also, the example yeah. of uh, Cristiano when it comes to, you know, the relocation of a employee and the tax consequence. Well, that also applies to state-owned companies. So it's, the answer would be yes, in short. Uh, yes. Well, uh, personally, I would just say that a state-owned company is a company. And the, the composition of the, the, the capital, the, the shareholding is, is something different, but a company must behave as a good company anyway. Well, that was personal insight. <laughs> um, <laughs> that there is a, a question on uh, 
to, to Cristiano and, and, and then Edwin, perhaps you can add, uh, where do you think there is resistance to applying this uh, tax strategy in a much more transparent way? Uh, where do you see the resistance within the company indeed? I mean, in my experience, uh, uh, I think the resistance could be uh, if there is a misunderstanding of the final uh, risk that you are taking if you do not apply this framework. If someone thinks that uh, it is better to take the risk and then to see after, uh, then there is a, a complete misalignment because uh, there is a famous concept which is called skin in the game and the board member has the skin in the game uh, when he, he manage a company and is part of the decision of the company. So um, operationally speaking, what I can testify, at least in the finance family here in general, there is a lot of prudence and uh, we, we find ourselves uh, in a situation where it is uh, easier to find the ta tax provision uh, positive uh, release instead of uh, um, uh, some, some plus and minuses, you know, having negative. And this is also coherent with our a long-term effective tax rate, which is always in between 30 to 33, apart from very specific uh, peculiar years, which is, in a certain sense, uh, a good representation of the average of what we get at group level, knowing that in Italy, the, 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 the final tax rate is, is in between uh, 25 to 27%, depending on uh, the, the amount of, uh, of tax you get. So uh, the, the, the nominal one. So clearly, uh, this is a quite important uh, element, in my opinion, to be underlined. It's not resistance uh, within the organization, within the operational. People accept and understand. In the finance family, there is a lot of attention around this because there is a clear understanding of the consequences. And on the board, the only risk you can find is a, a thinking that uh, you are not with the skin in the game. On the contrary, and uh, the, the correct and the appropriate uh, is paying uh, out and paying off even more. And even more now, allow me to mention something I did not uh, mention before, which is quite a lot uh, in the discussion. Even now, when after this COVID pandemic situation, all, especially starting from Europe, I'm speaking about generally, which is mainly Europe-based, we need to make each one of us the support to, to make uh, Europe uh, growing again, both from the investment and as well from the tax paying side. So I think there is a, a, a very clear understanding now of the, the roles and the responsibility, which does not mean paying more, but paying the right amount, as uh, exactly. correctly explained before. Yeah, I fully agree, Cristiano. There was yes, resistance sure. in the past, I think, uh, because tax was seen as a very technical topic in the capable hands of the VP tax, but it, it's now so important for the company as a whole. Cristiano mentioned, you know, tax in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, you know, the importance of tax in rating has become more important the importance of a good tax strategy and tax policy is becoming important in the context of getting a bank account, uh, of getting a, f a loan from a bank. It's becoming more important for investors. So, and also, you know, the tax transparency. Uh, I think, you know, the CFO is the one who has to tell the narrative to the outside world, to the stakeholders on tax. So you have to have a system in place. There is no escaping, I would say. And it, it's resistance. Well, there was resistance in the past, I think, but that's, that's, that has been changed over the last few years, I think, for many board members. Yeah. There was a, a question about, uh, you, you, and it was mentioned during uh, the conversation, but which committees should prepare the, the work for, for the board? You, you mentioned audit committee, risk committee, ESG committee, when there are all these committees, uh, where, where does the tax, uh, policy and strategy examination has to be prepared in all these committees or in which one? If, if you want, I start telling what we did in general. We did it uh, in the risk and control committee, uh, which then uh, shared the outcomes with the board of directors. We then informed of the changes the um, uh, ESG committee, the, 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 the Corporate Governance and Sustainability Committee, after having uh, passed in the Risk and Control Committee, because there are some anyhow technical aspects 
and in general uh, rules of uh, um, uh, procedures and uh, um, uh, reliances which are more in the hand of uh, a kind of risk or control or audit or a board of audit or committee where clearly I think you have the capabilities to understand what you are presenting. And then once this is embedded, can be clearly put uh, into the strategy and the sustainability. This is at least how, how we did. Edwin, any observation from your side? No, I think that's a good example. It depends a bit on the group, you know, where you have the end responsibility, but the connection between the sustainability officer, finance, risk, control, of course, is very important. Uh, and uh, I think Cristiano okay. said it. Yeah, yeah, there, there is a question about uh, uh, what about the, the customers and, and the, 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 the suppliers in your tax strategy? Is it just a corporation tax strategy or do you look further uh, upwards and downwards in a way? Yes, as you know, um, the treatment of VAT for financial services and in general in the insurance world, there is the so-called the indirect tax applied to the customer and paid directly within the insurance premium, I'm referring especially to PNC, uh, paid directly by the company. We have a, a kind of role of uh, executor uh, for this part. For what regards the, the people which uh, we are acting um, in, uh, in, let's say, buying uh, services or, or furniture, uh, there for us is the, uh, the the principle is very simple. It is related to to the the, the equilibrium between the choice of uh, the partner, which has to pass some ESG criteria, and at the same time ourselves committing to stay and pay within a certain amount of period, but anyhow not creating special scheme or other thing uh, which uh, are not uh, in, on the paper. It is not part of the, of the um, approach we have. So this is just at least as, as we are doing in general. Yes, to add to that, I gave the example, of, um, I gave the example of UBS, thank you, Michel, uh, who says in its policy, we don't work with service providers that provide services on our behalf uh, that avoid taxes. So it, it's becoming relevant, you know, to, to win work for suppliers. Uh, to, uh, we also do it at PwC. When we accept clients, we look at the application of the tax principles of our global tax code of conduct. Uh, before we can accept the clients, of course, another host of things that we look at, but those tax principles are, are quite important in accepting clients. So it's it's really a business issue, not only a tax issue anymore. But um, yeah, yeah. If I can add, I confirm on yeah. the ESG part. Uh, when I meant ESG, I meant exactly what he said now, because it is part of the full story, and we add on top even ESG. If people do not have a specific policy. Uh, being a global company, we have a lot of offers, and so we consider also that angle in making the decision. So if I translate in another way, it means that it's no more just a financial approach, technical approach, it's a reputational approach, isn't it? Reputational, business, it's, it has to do, you know, with your rating, it has to do with being able to get a bank loan. It has so many dimensions and, and not only reputation, huh? because when you use only that arguments, people, some people say, well, when you don't end up in the newspaper, then you will do it. But, you know, nowadays it has so many dimensions really impacting the business and your profitability, I think, and not only profitability from a tax cost point of view, but tax has so many impacts on the profitability at, at large of your company that, well, uh, the reputational dimension is important, but it's it's more than that at the moment, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure how you see it, Cristiano. No, no, I, I completely agree with you. And on top of that, I would say that uh, it is really a matter of uh, long-term relationship. And for us, at least being insurer, you can imagine that our product and in general the relationship we want to have with our clients is what we call the lifetime partner, which means really that we want to create long-lasting relationships based on trust and you cannot uh, uh, act uh, in a different way. So the reputation, uh, I think mentioned it also the reputation from our uh, client, from uh, our customer towards the group 
is very, very important. So being chosen also because of these values uh, is a key long-term sustainable value uh, added in the proposition. Mm -hmm. So it means that, uh, how, how do you look at your, your competitors who are in different uh, situations, different geographies, different tax regimes? Uh, how do you position this in the competitive environment? I know that, uh, yeah, if you compare uh, fiscal regime, which people which maybe are in Europe, but outside the European Union, speak about the tax regime in Switzerland, which is more favorable than the one we have uh, uh, in the rest of continental Europe, for example, for sure we look uh, uh, at this, but uh, it is not the, the, the point of uh, not being perceived uh, as uh, effective, because at the end of the story, what we look as generally is the global player. And a global player is not only concentrated in one country, uh, the huge amount of the uh, country by country report Uh, revenues and, uh, and, uh, and result generated is outside uh, the, the, the main country. I mean, even a concentrated group, everybody has more than two thirds usually uh, generated outside the, the, the country of origin, which is clearly, if you are a global player, uh, a more leveling field. There are regions and regimes where clearly, uh, if you are skewed towards a specific region, you get a little bit of advantage. And when we do the net result comparison, we always highlight that there is this gap as not something which has to be achieved, but as something that has to be rescaled in the sense of just leveling on a fair way the competition. Okay. Now, uh, we, are, we are nearing the, the end, so I think we have answered most questions or all questions. And if there are some Uh, they will be passed to you for uh, further answer after this uh, session. So I would just like, uh, before, before closing, I would like you, each of you, to, to give, to make, how do you make sure an organization is perceived as a responsible taxpayer, in a few words? How would you say that? Ooh, yeah, that, that's difficult in a few words, uh, Michel, I think, you know, <laughs> but, but have, have, have this tax strategy show to your stakeholders and to the public at large that this tax strategy is based on conversations with your stakeholders that but also show that you really implement this tax strategy i think and show the end results and of course you know you can position yourselves at a different place at the scale but i think that's the most important thing have this strategy and show that you implement it maybe show also the dilemmas that you face when implementing it be very transparent seek for a very collaborative approach, as Cristiano says, with the tax administration and, and share your dilemmas with them as well, because you will face many dilemmas if you want to pursue, you know, a responsible tax strategy ending up in responsible tax behavior. Costs are opportunities, technical opportunities to reduce taxes. And that, that's still not, we still don't have a harmonized tax world. So you have to have to really face and discuss these dilemmas, not only with tax technical people, but with stakeholders, with the board, with the tax administration. And then you will end up, I think, in what you could call responsible tax behavior. Yeah. Thank you. You, you, said, it, you, you said it all. Uh, on my side, I, I say it very simple. You, you need to walk the talk because you are constantly judged by all the stakeholders and uh, then sleep well. Because the only thing you have to do is to walk the talk. I mean, do what you say. Uh, and on that topic is key. And uh, you need time to get all the confidence and the uh, acknowledgement by all the different stakeholders. But it is key, in my opinion, uh, as a behavior uh, uh, in order to achieve uh, this level of uh, acknowledgement and understanding of that we are serious about this point. Thank you. So uh, I hope uh, we have managed to raise appetite for addressing this topic at board level. I'm sure now uh, we, we were, of course, considering uh, climate, remuneration, uh, environmental, social, etc. Uh, we could add now tax in the long list of uh, items which board members need to tackle. So for board members, please, there is a lot of work to do, as usual. We are the doers. The, the management and the board have to implement. 
So look at tax options, but ensure tax transparency. This is how I would summarize the situation so that your reputation is intact. Well, thank you for participants. Thank you for our guests for having been very open and having given us uh, all the tips to make this a successful uh, review. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.